Yo, what up? It's DJ Slam. Just doing a little video here to show you uh, if you're a rapper, DJ, whatever, and uh, you need to do some clean edits for a radio show. For example, my radio show, Ring A Game, on Mondays at 10 on CIUT. We need clean edits for the show. And a lot of times dudes are like, oh, I, how do I do that? How do I, I don't know, get the track ready to go for your show? So I just thought I'd do a little quick video here on how to get the song ready to go to send to us. So the song I'm gonna use here is off my, my first EP. Uh, I just realized I don't have a clean edit of it. It was on an older, missing plugins. And, uh, it's not even worth getting into. But now that I have the session opened up, the next step is to find the BPM or you know the beats per minute of the song because it makes it a little bit edit easier to like edit the tracks. You wanna edit on the beat, that's the best way to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do, and, and if you don't have Pro Tools, this is fine. Uh, I'm just going to show you the ways to do it, like, with any kind of program. So I go to, uh, there's a website here called, um, <clears throat> or if you just search BPM Calc, that's what I search on Google. First thing that pops up is all eight, taps, whatever. Click the mouse, uh, keep uh, space button, and so I'll just play it here. Anyways, it says it's 87 BPM. So quickly change this. All right, so it's roughly on it. It's not super important, but uh, it does make it easier in terms of the editing. All right, so the next question that a lot of people ask me is what words do you have to edit out on the radio? The obvious ones of like fucking shit and, and bomb and whatnot, those obviously have to go bitch, dick for some weird reason you can't say or is, Whatever. The best way I've heard it put is if if this is a word that you wouldn't say to your grandmother, then it's got got to go. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna find an edit. Watch the new flow, spark the endo out the window. All right, so I found a swear word here. So I'll quickly show you how to do this. Um, the fucking Lord they gave him that. All right, so fuck. Fucking Lord. You want to find the very beginning of it. If I zoom in here, the very start of the word is obviously here, right? So I'm gonna start it right about there. And then it ends, it ends there. It starts here, ends there. So what's important is that you, you do it right at the lowest part of the thing. And if you're really, really picky, you wanna go to like to the very zero point. The zero point is basically where they all cross the line at the middle here. So actually probably there. That would be a zero point edit. That's if you really, the next step is you wanna reverse it. So what you do is you go up in Pro Tools to Audio Suite, to Other, very bottom, reverse, right? Uh, when you open it up, it looks like this. It's just got a render button, it's pretty simple. So you render that. So what I should mention is that when you do the edit, when you look at it, it should look uh, like a mirror of the uh, original way it looked before. It should almost look identical the way after. Uh, that'll show you that, you, that you're on beat, usually, and uh, it'll just sound good. It's almost identical backwards. So let me just do that again. Right? So it actually sounds it sounds pretty good, uh, good enough for me at least. Um, so you're gonna see if you see here on this side, uh, the way these two waves are, they're not matching. So by doing this edit alone, where you just uh, reverse it, that's not enough. I'll just quickly tell you why it's important to do a quick fade, cross fade at least. So on Pro Tools, it's Command F open it up, boom, done. And you do it on both sides. So why is it important to do that? A lot of speakers, uh, if you don't do the edit there, it, it'll, it'll create a pop sound. Sometimes it'll be really noticeable, usually it won't be. That pop is enough to blow your speakers or blow the tweeters in your speakers to the high end, which is why a lot of people, a lot of rappers drive cars that have no high end in their car because they're listening to their rap edits and it just blows out all the high end of their car there's there's the truth 
do those edits. You'll save someone else's speakers and you'll save someone from hating you. Uh, and you'll save a lot of headphones and stuff like that too. All right, now that the whole thing's edited, this is the most important part of the whole thing. It's titling it when you bounce it. This is so important. I can't tell you how many times on the radio show we've got we've been going insane trying to figure out who sent us the song or what the name of the song is because people don't title their tracks properly. It's just it's like it's your song. Title it properly so we know who you are. When you send us an email that says something like like this track's called Stormy. If you if I sent this to a show and it said Stormy Clean, they'd be like, what the hell is that? Like, who did it? Who was on that song? I heard three rappers on this song. Who are they? <laughs> just, so when you bounce it, so bounce, wave files are fine. You can, wave files are okay. In fact, they're better. They're better quality. So when you title your track, I'm gonna zoom in here. It's very important that you do this. First thing that you do, is put the name of your song or the artist, but let's do the name of the song. So in, in this case, it's Stormy. People always ask like, why do I put underscores instead of just spaces between things? It's not a huge deal. It doesn't make a huge difference doing it. But what people don't know is that when you put spaces in file names, th they can become corrupted that way because, um, when there's a space, the computer might mistake that and think that that's the whole file. But I don't know. I don't remember the exact reasons, but basically it becomes easier to get corrupted when you put spaces in the title of a song. Anyway, so it's Stormy, DJ Slam, underscore, uh, whoever else is on the track. So, you know, Practical Stylist, whatever. I'm not going to put all that info because it's my song. I know who's on it. Um, so Stormy, DJ Slam, then put Radio, or Clean, doesn't matter. And if you really want to take it a next step, uh, remember at the beginning where I said get the BPM? Or if you have the BPM, the next step would be put that at the end, so 87. So as a DJ or radio host, they'll know everything about your song. It's called Stormy. It's by DJ Slam. It's the clean version, and it's 87 BPM. It's literally everything they need to know about the song. Once you bounce that, which I've already done, and this is important too, is you want to open it in iTunes. If you have, if this is, if you have a Mac like me, open it in iTunes. Right. So here's the song. Let's go to the song. Next thing you want to do is you want to get the info and fill out this info. So a clean 2000 whatever for uh, hip hop done. That will automatically save to the file. And so next time I open it up, or if you send this file, it should have all that info on it. And if it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's already there. And so when you send it to someone, it should open up automatically in like Serato or whatever program as the, the, type, the full name of everything. But just in case it doesn't, the file name has all the description in it. Um, anyways, that's how you edit a track and make it ready to go for the radio. And hopefully you guys, uh, you know, pay attention. <laughs>